Good morning, family. Good morning, family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to our family and friends worshiping with us in person, on Facebook Live, and on our official YouTube channel. We bring you greetings from the Bethel Community Church right here in the beautiful city of Fairfield, California. Our pastor is Anthony Gilmore. For those of you who would like to send cards, prayer requests, or words of encouragement, our address is 600 East Tabor Avenue, Fairfield, California, 94533. If you would like to send donations, you can use Givelify, Venmo, or Cash App. We want to thank you for worshiping with us each week and supporting this ministry. We are here to bring you hope, peace, joy, and we are glad you are here in the building and at home watching. And we praise God for technology. So let us praise him for all he has done and worship him for who he is. Oh, to be kept by Jesus, Lord, at thy feet I fall, I would be nothing, nothing, oh.
to be kept by Jesus. There's a few of the mothers in the house today that know what it means to be kept by Jesus. He's a keeper. There's a mother in the back that know that he kept her when her child was out wilding out doing whatever he wanted to do. He kept you. When you didn't have no money to pay your bills, God is a keeper. Do I have any witnesses in the house today? Some of y'all are too young to know what God will do, but he'll keep you when you ain't got no food in the house, when you ain't got no money in your pocket, when your child is running around town from house to house not having a home. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Do I have any witnesses that know that God's a keeper? Is he a keeper? He kept, well, you ain't got to, I'll do it for myself because he kept me. Because when I look back over my life and I see where God has brought me from, I know that I couldn't have done it by myself. God is a keeper. Is he a keeper? He'll, he's a keeper. Pastor, is he a keeper? Reverend, is he a keeper? God is a keeper. He kept my mother. He kept my grandmother. He kept my grandfather. He's keeping me. He's keeping my wife. He's keeping my children. He's keeping my church family. Oh, yes. He's a keeper. Come on and shout glory in the house today. Come on and give him some praise in the house right now. Because God is a keeper. This could be your last time. You better give him some praise. You better give him some praise. He, he's worthy. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Come on and thank him. Come on and thank him. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I had to get that off of my chest. He's been too good to us to sit on our do-nothings and do nothing. You better start praising God while you still have breath in your body. There's somebody that's on their deathbed right now and wish they could be down in the house of the Lord praising God, but they in their deathbed, they want to wave their hand. They want to run around the church. They want to shout glory. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God, for what you've done for us. We thank you now for healing power right now. We thank you now for the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. We ask now that you would indwell the building and dwell the hearts of the people right now. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive the word right now, oh God. We ask that you would bless the man of God that's going to bring your word right now. We ask that you would touch this choir right now and touch these musicians, oh God, and touch our choir director in the name of you. Touch the preachers and touch the mothers and touch our children and touch the ushers. It's in the name of Jesus that strongholds can't hold me no more. They gonna be broke down in the name of Jesus. Come on and shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 Hey.
on behalf of my pastor, the Reverend A.L. Gilmore and First Lady Gilmore and the entire BCC family, we want to say to our visitors that we're so glad that you stopped by here on your way to heaven. Well, the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. So in the name of our Father, in the name of his Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless each and every one of you. The greatness of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that He shown, the love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord, the power of the Lord, unbeatable. Is
How many came with a worship on your heart today? With a praise in your spirit today? If you truth be told, how many of y'all are tired today? But since you're here, I said since you're here, because I know I'm tired, but I never get tired of giving God praise. Actually, he's the reason why I'm tired, right? What I mean by that, because every feeling that I have in my body tells me that I'm alive. Who's alive today? I said, who's really alive today? Did you come to give God some praise? Did you come to worship him? I said, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy of all the praise, of all the glory. And if you got it, and if you got it made today, why don't you praise him for somebody else? Why don't you learn how to intercede for those who don't know how to give God a hand praise, don't know how to lift him. Why don't you just intercede for somebody? You have a purpose, I always say. In this life, we all have a purpose. Just give the Lord some praise. Give him glory, give him honor. It's not about you, but it's about Jesus. I said, it's not about us, but it's about the Lord. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus. I'm so glad. I'm if you're glad, sing it like you really mean it. Singing glory. Oh, put your hands together. I'm so glad. That Jesus, I'm so glad that Jesus, I'm so glad, Jesus, I'm singing glory, Jesus, I'm so glad, Jesus, oh, I'm so glad, Jesus, I'm so Jesus, saved and sanctified, Jesus, I'm saved, Jesus, I'm saved, Jesus, I'm singing, oh, I'm so glad, oh, I'm so glad, oh, Oh, 
you're still with, looking at me like you're concerned about something, give it to Jesus. The devil is a lot. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about you, but I've been through some stuff this week. The devil is a lot. Yeah. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, demons tremble at the name, the very name of Jesus. telling you. You better speak to him like you know God. You better talk to the devil like you know a man from Galilee. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. Giving sight to the blind. Blind not in your physical but sometimes in your spiritual. You get blind. But he's a liar. That's my praise every morning. I sit up in my bed. I said, the devil is a liar. I don't wait to clear my voice. I said, the devil is a liar. And if you didn't know that he gets in every detail, makes you think that the other person's wrong when you're wrong. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you. I love you, 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 Lord. Today, yesterday's gone, tomorrow's not promised because you cared for me. Oh, yes, you did, oh, yes, you did in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I'll lift you up. I'll magnify your name. Oh, yeah. If I got to magnify you all by myself, Jesus, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you, Lord. Today, it's because you care for me when I'm going through in such a... What you see on the outside ain't necessarily what's on the inside, what's going on right now in my life. Special way. Oh, but I promise God that I'll praise you through it. I'll lift you up. I'll magnify your name. Whoa, that's why my heart is filled. Is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Let's go higher in Jesus. Mm. I don't know about you, but there's so many reasons. To give the Lord praise. I don't have to wait on nobody to tell me to praise God. I'm just thankful every day. So let's, 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 let's. However the Lord is leading us today. That's where I'm going to go how he's leading me. I got so many reasons. How many of you have it? So many reasons. Sometimes we think about our circumstances, but guess what? My heart is a reason why I praise. The fact that I got functioning kidneys and lungs is a reason that I praise him. The fact that I'm clothed in my right mind is the reason that I give God some praise. Come on, choir. Woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. And you started me on my way. And you started me on my way. 
Come on, sing it like you mean it. Don't worry about the details. I just need to hear your voice. You get it? What do you do? Just to see another day. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, oh yes.
bless him. Bless him. Oh, bless him. How many did you count on your hands? Can you count on one hand? Can you count on one hand? How many reasons? Oh, yeah. And I bet just yesterday, so God. How many reasons? Or the devil gave you one more reason to praise his name, yeah. to give him glory, huh? to give him honor, and all that that goes with being a Christian. And they'll know that we're Christians by our love. I said they'll know that we're Christians by our love. Is that right? Hallelujah. Made a way. Made a way. And he keeps on making a way. Are you ready, choir? I need y'all to, you know, don't be afraid. It's your people out there. Just sing with your heart, okay? Relax. You're not on stage. You're in a worship experience.
So glad you did. 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 Made a way. Made a way. I'm really glad he made a way. Come on, don't fool me. I'm glad he made a way. He made a way when I didn't see a way. I'm glad he makes a way. How good the Lord is. Come on, give it up for our choir today. Come on, come on, give it up for them. Give it up for our band. Amen. Amen. Praise God today whom all blessings flow. Very pleasant good morning to all of you. Good morning to all of you. Good to be back in the house of worship one more time. The Lord has allowed us another opportunity for worship. Amen. Give it up for all of our guests today. We're happy that you are in our midst today. All of our visitors, we are happy that you have Come by to worship with us, and we pray that you have a five-star church experience. Amen. Good to see Brother Will and Sister Monica back. Amen. They've been gone for nine months, but they came back today, just fell back in line. <laughs> Good to see their family today, all of our guests who are with us. I want to make mention real quick that we are our scholarship Breakfast is coming up on um, November 2nd. Everybody say November 2nd. November 2nd, church family. Now, we're going to buy the tickets. We're going to pack out Applebee's as we uh, support the LLAR scholarship fund as we send uh, help some young person go off to college. Amen. And so you can see the scholarship, the scholarship uh, ministry, they are here, Reverend Evans and Sister Kathy and Sister Kelly and others who have those tickets. But don't let us down. Now, it's only October 13th, November 2nd is fastly approaching, and Reverend Evans acts like it's the Coliseum and they got to sell it out. He seems nervous. He said, Pastor, we ain't selling a ticket. We got plenty of time. If he know you like I know you. At the last minute, I keep telling him, don't worry. They're going to come through. Amen? Amen? And so I know that those tickets will be all gone by November 2nd. There'll be people asking for tickets, and there won't be any tickets. It happens every year. And so, church family, be encouraged. I want you to support the scholarship ministry. Amen? Amen. I always say that if we can't do ministry on the outside of these four walls, we need to close up. Amen? And so we want to be a blessing to some young person, but the scholarship team is asking for your support. Um, uh, the tickets are $15 for the breakfast there at Applebee's on November the 2nd. Amen? So I'm looking for your participation. Today is voter registration day. Amen. 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 Yes, you're going to hear about 
voting at Bethel. Amen. If you don't want to hear it, you might be at the wrong church. But if you are a member of Bethel, we encourage you, if you're not registered, you need to register to vote. Amen. Amen. In the lobby there, Sister Jeter, I believe, has a place ready. If you, did, if you are not registered to vote, don't leave here today without registering to vote. Amen. This is the most, one of the most important elections of our lifetime. Amen. And let me encourage those of you that think your vote does not count. Your vote does count. Amen. Your vote does count. And uh, some people say now they don't want to vote because their vote doesn't count. Well, I, I submit to you that our forefathers, our foreparents, gave their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could have this right. And shame on us if we don't vote. Amen. Amen. We need to vote. We need to vote. We need to vote. And don't complain if you're not going to vote. Don't complain. And some of the votes that you cast this election season will affect your great-grandchildren and generations to come. And so I encourage you, if you're 18 years and up, uh, make sure, make sure today you are registered to vote. Amen. If you're not sure, Sister Jeter will be there at the table. She can help you understand the difference between the parties. If you're not sure, you can come talk to me. I'll really hold your hand. Amen. I'll hold your, I'll even take the pen and help you. But it's important that we vote, church family. It's important that we vote. And I dare not, I dare not, uh, uh, I dare not remind people of the importance of the uh, democratic process in this country. Amen. So make sure you're registered to vote today. We want, we're in prayer for sister, our own sister Tabby Smith, who is hospitalized. I didn't know that. Just found that out today. But we're praying for her. Amen. Amen. Also praying for our good friend, Pastor Jimmy Cox, who is there hospitalized in Sacramento. And I always say next time might be your time, our time. So we want to pray one for the other. We're going to receive our gifts today. Time for offering. It's time for offering. We're going to bring our gifts. We're going to bring our gifts. The scripture tells us the plan to finance ministry. We should not be selling chicken dinners and hog gut dinners and rummage sales. And No, no, no. That's not the plan. The Lord tells us how to do it. And the way he says to do it is to bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings there should not be room enough to receive and so if you'd like to make your donation today using the online giving tools you may use the cash app or the Venmo or Givelify uh, on your smartphone just search for Bethel Community church. You can make your donation there. It takes all of us doing our part, amen, in order to do ministry. In order to do ministry, it takes money, amen, amen. I know you don't like to hear about it, but PG&E don't give us free lights because we love the Lord. No, 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 they want their money, amen, amen. And so we're looking for your support. All of us do our part the Lord promises to give it back to us, pressed down, shaken together, even allows it to run over. And what I've discovered is that the power of abundant living comes through giving. Amen? In other words, you want to have more, give more. I don't believe in blessed rabbit feet and broke mirrors and black cats and good luck. I don't believe. But I do believe what the Word of God says. And I only tell you that because I've tried it and I know it to be true. Let's bow our heads. We're going to bring our gifts. The choir is going to come. We'll come back and see what thus saith the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, bless our gifts now. Thank you for resources. Thank you for blessing us with gifts to give. The time has come for us to worship with our gifts today. And Lord, I pray that you would receive our gifts. Don't let our coming be in vain. I pray that you will give back to them as you said in your word, pressed down, shaken together even allow it to run over. And Lord, I believe your word and I've shared 
your word where you said if we bring the tithe, you would open the windows and pour out blessings. We believe that the power of abundant living comes through our giving. So we bring it today. We give to you. Sacrificially, we give humbly. Not to be seen of men, we give that your kingdom might be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask those of you in these two side sections if you would stand, face the walls, and come around from the rear, side sections. Some music. music. If you hear my home going, <laughs> don't you worry about me. When you hear my home going, don't you worry about me. When you hear my home going, don't worry about me. The old church would say, I'm packed up, <laughs> hey, on my way home. One thing I know. Middle section, if you would stand. Face my left, your right. Come around from the rear. bless our ushers today. Thank you for your gifts. Sing.
heart is filled with despair. Remember God cares. God cares for you. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, He will see you through. Yes, He will. Jesus, demons, tremble 
brother, Jesus, my best friend, Jesus, demons tremble at the name Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, there's something about the name Jesus, Jesus, when my back is against the wall, Jesus, uh, uh. the more I call him, the better I feel. Nobody do me like Jesus. Ain't nobody. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 You don't know what he's done for me. How many got victory? Gave me the victory. How many love him today? Come on, help me say. Do you love him? I love I mean, do you really love the Lord? Come on. I really love the Lord. One more time, you don't know what he's done for me. Come on. Tell your neighbor, you don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. He gave me I love him today. I love him. I love him. And I love him. I love him. I love him. I love, I love him. him. I, I really love him. Really love I really love him. I really love the Lord. <laughs> Don't matter what's going on around me, I still love him. I really 
I really love you don't know Yes, I do. I love, I love him. him. I love him. I, I really, really love. love. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I'm sorry. How many know it flows? It flows to the lowest valley. The blood of Jesus, the blood that gives me strength from day. It will never <laughs> Oh yes To the high Close to the lowest valley That gives me strength, yeah, from day, day, day to day. Today. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I said I'm glad. I'm glad about yes, I'm glad. I'm glad. How many can say that? It's another day's journey, and I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad to be here. I'm so. When I look around and I see all my friends that have gone on before me, I can say, yes, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. Yes, I'm glad, so glad. And I'm glad. Glad. Grandma would say he gave me health and strength. Come on, y'all. He gave me health and strength, y'all. And I'm glad. I'm mighty glad about it. So glad about it. He gave me health and strength, y'all. Eternal God, our Father, we come now with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, the time has come for us to look at your word. 
that, Lord, your word is big and I'm little. Your word is powerful and I'm weak. Pray that you would speak with my mouth, think with my mind. Bless this waiting congregation today. Lord, we don't take your blessings for granted, and so we say thank you for all of your goodness. Not because we've lived so holy or so righteous, not because we kept your commandments so well, but your grace, your mercy yeah. has given us another opportunity. So look on us now. Forgive us of all of our sins, sins of commission, sins of omission. Blot out our transgressions. Lord, I pray today that you would look on Sister Tabby today in a special way. We pray that you would touch her body right now. Lord, I pray that you would remember Brother Ron, the the brother of Sister C today, yes. look on him in a special way. Then, Lord, I pray that you would remember Reverend Jimmy Cox today. Yes. Yes. You made him. Yes. You know all about him. Yes. I pray, God, that you would help us to accept your will. Yes. Yes. Look on Nedra today. Look on that family. Yes. Your will be done on earth yes. as it is in heaven. Yes. Look on us now. Have your way in this worship today. Bless this waiting congregation. Somebody in the room today is standing in the need of a blessing. Look on us now. Somebody came and their heart is heavy today. Somebody is waiting on the moving of your Holy Spirit. Somebody is waiting on just a touch. Look on us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turning your thoughts today. The book of Zechariah, the Old Testament, Zechariah is right after Haggai. Zechariah, we're going to look at chapter 3. While we're in Zechariah, somebody else find the book of Acts chapter 7 in the New Testament. Zechariah chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 1 through 4, and then we'll drop down, flip over to Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Is that all right? In the interest of time, I'm going to read it so we can move swiftly. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke, rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I've caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Well. Acts chapter 7 verse 55 says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand well, of God. Well. Right. I want to use for our subject today, he stood up for me. He stood up for me. I want to talk to somebody today who has been haunted by the ghost of guilt. Somebody here today that's been haunted by the ghost of guilt haunted by the ghost of your guilt. Are y'all in here today? Most of my life, Sister Lee, I have been the type of person, uh, Sister Yolanda, that I'll stand up for my family and my friends. Are y'all with me today? Brother Davis, even when my family, when my friends, when they have missed the mark, I still uh, look for the good. It's still good to know you got somebody who will stand up for you. Are y'all in here? Tasha, most of us are great defenders of our children. The mothers ought to talk to me if nobody else does. Uh, yeah, mothers, Monica, will defend their children, uh, sometime even when that rascal is wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nobody will stand up for you like mama. Are y'all with me? 
Uh, uh, Sister Deborah, uh, no matter what our children do, no matter how bad they've been, no matter how crazy they act, we ordinarily will stand up for our children. I knew, I knew, I knew, Sister Angelo, I knew growing up that, uh, that I had grandmama who would stand up for me. Are y'all in here? Uh, uh, Sister Hart, it was good to know that whatever state I found myself, perhaps those around me might be disappointed. But if nobody else stood for me, Reverend Manning, I knew that Grandmama was going to stand up for me. Uh, uh, Sister Andy, it's always a sad thing uh, uh, as I move around in my role as pastor when I'm uh, asked to support someone that's going to court. Are y'all in here? Uh, whether adult or juvenile, when I'm standing with them before the judge, I usually will stand and take note that this person is in trouble with the law. Sometimes I notice they have nobody there for them. Nobody willing to stand with them. Sometimes parents uh, 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 ha have thrown their hands in the air. Are y'all with me today? They've thrown in the towel. They refuse to go anymore. Uh, 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 Chanel, sometimes siblings give up saying, you ain't trying to change. You, you, you ain't trying to be better. So uh, I'm tired of your drama. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's sad, Reverend Johnson, to look around uh, in a courtroom and, and uh, look around and see that there's nobody there for that person. No one to stand up in an effort to hopefully make a difference. Uh, uh, Sister Ruby, there, there are times, there, I've noticed there are three kinds of trouble we can find ourselves involved in. First of all, there's trouble we can avoid. Are y'all with me? Uh, Sabrina, then there's trouble that we cannot avoid, and then there's trouble that we must not avoid. Brother Al, they didn't catch that, so I'm going to repeat that. But there's three kinds of trouble. There's trouble, Monica, that we can avoid, then there's trouble we cannot avoid, Brother Tiny, and then there's trouble uh, that we must not avoid. It's difficult, it's difficult uh, uh, Sister Rita, to stand up for people who find themselves in trouble that they could have avoided. I mean, they was just a natural born knucklehead and knew better and still got in trouble. Uh, Brother Will, uh, the young people, I hope y'all can hear me today. Uh, there's some things you just ain't got to do. And I said it like that. There's some things you just don't have to do. I mean, come on, y'all. Uh, I mean, if, if you know your tags is expired, okay, that's enough. <laughs> I mean, if your tags is bad, at least don't ride around with a broke out tail light. I mean, it's some stuff you just don't have to do. I mean, I mean, if the rule is uh, wear your seat belt, then just wear your seatbelt. Then when you get pulled over, you want to raise cane with the officer like he did something wrong. No, follow the law. Y'all ain't with me. Uh, 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 I remember, I remember. I don't know how you grew up. I don't know how you grew up, but I remember. I grew up in a house. I grew up in a house, Dr. Hudson, where uh, uh, Grandma and them told us that uh, when we was growing up, if you go to jail because... Uh, uh, you choose to do the wrong thing. The word was, don't call <laughs> here. I, I don't know how you grew up. I don't know how you grew up. I don't know. But where I grew up, they told us, if you go to jail because you chose to be a fool, don't call here. And just maybe, just maybe, I don't know, only maybe, just maybe that's why I never went, because I knew where I couldn't call. 
Yeah, and so I, I avoided certain things. I avoided certain crowds that could lead me in to trouble. Are y'all with me? Uh, 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 and then there are some troubles, Regina, that we can not avoid. Sometimes we find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sometimes we started out innocent quickly. Uh, it turns into something uh, 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 that's troublesome. Though uh, There's some situations that we just cannot avoid. And then, my brothers and sisters, there's uh, the trouble that we must not avoid. Uh, uh, and this is where I want to focus on today. Uh, but you remember the late John Lewis, the congressman, he said, get into good trouble. Are y'all in here? And so every now and then, uh, Sister Lambert, I like to go to City Hall and uh, when it's City Hall meeting, and I like to get in good trouble. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like to shake the trees. Are y'all ain't saying that? So there's some trouble that uh, 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 we must not avoid. Are y'all with me? And so, yeah, that, that kind of trouble, if I get in trouble for telling folk that uh, 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 one of our political candidates is a... Oh, that's another sermon. That's another sermon for another Sunday. <laughs> but if I get in trouble for trying to lead God's people in the right way, let me get in trouble. If I get in trouble for, 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 for defending our young men who are being shot by policemen like dogs in the street for no reason, yeah, get, then, I, then that's the kind of trouble I want. And so come on, go with me, go with me. I want to look at that kind of trouble that we must not avoid. But in this Old Testament text, Reverend Evans, uh, uh, in this scripture, uh, I think it'll speak to us this morning. And I ain't going to be long because it's 1230 and we got to go. But uh, we find in this exciting text that Zechariah was allowed to see a vision of Joshua, the high priest. Are y'all with me? The Bible says uh, he was the high priest who was found standing before the angel of the Lord. I just read it, and it's in your Bible too, unless you tear it out. The previous vi uh, uh, visions that Zechariah witnessed stressed blessings for the nation of Israel. But these promises, Sister Evans, were contingent upon obedience and the cleansing of the nation. Stay with me for a few minutes. I promise it'll make sense in a minute. Uh, 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 this fourth vision reveals that the priestly office of Israel must be reinstated in the favor of God. Uh, come on, remember with me at this point that it was a polluted priesthood that brought woe upon the nation of Israel. Polluted priesthood. Y'all don't like that kind of preaching. Uh, the only fix for the nation was going to require Purging. Are y'all with me? Sister Deborah, Zechariah was allowed to see the vision of Joshua, the high priest, in his official and representative capacity, and he is now standing before the angel of the Lord in, in the performance of a priestly ministry. Now, remember with me. I, I promise, stay with me. This will make sense in a minute. Remember, in order to conduct the duties of the priest, and to cleanse Israel of their sins for another year, that the priest firstly had to be cleansed of his sins. He was ceremonially clean. Sister Natalie, if the priest were found guilty of any sin, he would not make it out of the holy of holies alive. Are y'all with me? I wish there were some Bible readers in here. Uh, this was serious business, and let me say to you this morning that it's just as serious today as it was back then. What do you mean, preacher? Well, Sister Jones, uh, uh, those of us who stand behind the sacred desk, y'all ain't in here, every Sunday morning, those that have been taking these titles of bishop and apostle and uh, prophet and <laughs> reverend and pastor, we ought to take the charge seriously. Okay, I didn't get a lot of help right there. I believe uh, we see so much ungodliness from the pulpit. Uh, why? Because we need to go through a purification process and be reminded that this is not an occupation. This is a calling by God. 
if you ain't been called, I promise you, you don't want to do this. Y'all ain't in here. Preachers, y'all could help me out. Uh, 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 yeah, and so uh, Joshua, the high priest, is standing. He's about to begin his duties for the Lord when all of a sudden, Brother Carl, he finds himself the object of accusations by the devil. You ever find yourself minding your own business? You ever find yourself not bothering nobody? <laughs> just trying to live a saved life and all of a sudden you find yourself Adrenia right in the middle of mess are y'all in here consider the implications with me this morning Satan is suggesting that if Joshua were to be found guilty as charged the nation of Israel would be rejected by God. Stay with me. If Joshua uh, were to be cleared of the charges, the nation be one, would be once again accepted by God. So what does that mean? Uh, Sister Wicker, in, 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 the United, in, the, in these divided states of America, we have this nice little cute phrase that we throw around and we say, Donnie, uh, that a person is innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> That's just a little cute phrase. I mean, that's just a little cute phrase. But I don't know about you, but I've lived long enough to know that it's just a cute phrase. It's really a cute phrase if you're a person of color. Uh oh. <laughs> if I get in trouble, I'm just in trouble. Uh, 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 if you're brown uh, 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 or, or a person of color, uh, then usually it's guilty. Y'all ain't with me. Until proven innocent. I mean, stay with me. Come on, y'all. It, it, it's, it's also interesting to note that the text calls our attention to the fact that Satan was standing on Joshua's right side. Standing at the right side is reserved as a position of power and authority. Uh, Satan, brother Cedric, was attempting to take charge of the scene. Let me give you this disclaimer right quick. I realize that Satan is the father of lies. You do agree, right? Sister Jenkins, but in this instance, Satan didn't need to lie because the facts was already clear. Joshua had made some mistakes in his life. How do I know? Because uh, uh, the Bible says in Romans 3 and 10, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Matter of fact, Satan could have lodged some of the same accusations against some of us. Most of us who have lived any amount of time have done some stuff that we ain't proud of. Come on, y'all. Don't get quiet. Matter of fact, we've done some stuff that we hope don't nobody ever find out. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so Satan was there to do one thing. Thing, and that was to lodge a commendation. I believe Satan could not fully tell the truth. Y'all ain't in here. Uh, Reverend Pendleton, I believe that he attempted to exaggerate his claim and exaggerate his accusation. Uh, you know how the devil does, because oftentimes we do the same thing. <laughs> what do you mean, preacher? Well, okay, it's hard to repeat a story that we've been told when we tell somebody else the story, you know, we tend to uh, stretch the... St <laughs> it, it, we have a hard time repeating a story just like we heard it. And my grandma would say, sometimes we throw a little yeast on it, <laughs> you know, and, and then we watch it rise. So here was the adversary with his claims and his accusations. Then he stands back and waits for God to say guilty as charged. Instead of the Lord saying guilty as charged, the Lord rebukes Satan. Y'all ain't in here. Not because Israel was righteous. Not because the nation had already suffered the fire in exile. Not because Joshua was the high priest uh, had never sinned. No, no, no. Not because Satan was exaggerating, but because God had made an internal and immutable choice of Israel out of love for her look at this high priest, 
Uh, uh, come on, look at it, y'all. Uh, he was guilty because the text says he was clothed with filthy garments. But guess what happened, Dr. Robinson? God stepped in. Y'all ain't in here. Uh, and, and, and God stepped in, and when he does, he makes everything all right. Uh, for this is the brand, he says, uh, plucked out of the fire. I, 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 he, in other words, he says, I know you're not perfect, but you tried your very best. Brother Bolden, I know you didn't do everything right, but you tried your very best. I ain't getting no help today. I know you stumbled along the way, but you gave it your best shot. Brother Blakey, uh, he says, I know you sinned every now and then, but, but I heard your prayers late in the midnight hour. In other words, he says, I heard you calling out to me, Sister Brown, in your distress. I heard you groaning in the spirit. He says, I remember your sins no more. And I don't know about y'all, but that's good news to me. What's good news, preacher? Well, the good news to me is we have a father who is more than just able to forgive us. Y'all ain't in here. I'm going to continue to press this claim. I got to get out of here. Uh, but look over with me in the New Testament real quick. Uh, there you find Brother Stephen in the same boat that I found Joshua, the high priest, in. Remember with me, Bible readers, that uh, Stephen was the first deacon chosen by the people. Are y'all in here? Stephen's spirituality is noticed in his daily walk, Brother Deacon. Uh, he had a reputation for walking with God. Uh, Sister Robinson, many deacons have many reputations today. <laughs> And I ain't going to bother their reputations, but I do wonder how many deacons have a reputation of walking with God. Y'all don't like this kind of preacher. The Bible says Stephen was a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. I'm almost done. Uh, that simply means Stephen had a good reputation. Uh, this was a man that practiced what he preached. Y'all ain't in here. The scripture says, uh, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among people. Are y'all with me? It is apparent, y'all, that everything Stephen did was characterized by the fact that he relied on God to help him do it. To be perfectly honest with you this morning, such a lifestyle was not just reserved for Stephen or the deacons. The same lifestyle is required of you and I. In other words, the Bible says he spoke with wisdom. He spoke God's word. He spoke without weakness. He spoke with boldness. Uh, he had a love for sinners and he loved to see them repent their sins. He preached Christ in spite of people who didn't agree with him. Uh, he, he, in spite of uh, folks' lifestyle, he told people right from wrong. Uh, and all I'm saying is he found himself in trouble that he couldn't avoid. Some people will turn on you because of who you represent. I've discovered that some people will despise you because of what you stand for. And God knows we live in a society today where, where, where if you don't agree with folk, they will turn on you. Some people will become your enemy because you tell them right from wrong. I am therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. All too often, Christians, we tend to back away when we feel some resistance to the message of God because we are, uh, we're talked about. We no longer want to tell folk what thus says the Lord. Because we are disliked, we no longer desire to be a witness to men and women. And so Stephen uh, Sister Natalie had a love for sinners, and he wouldn't back down. 
And I want to let y'all know today, uh, too many of us want to shake the dust from our feet at the slightest sign of trouble or tension. Uh, there's, there's some trouble, uh, Brother Robinson, that we must not avoid. Uh, the late John Lewis said we ought to get in good trouble. Satan had caused uh, some of them that heard the message uh, uh, of Stephen to be filled with indignation. And so then quickly, uh, these people turned on Stephen to the point the Bible says that they drug him out of the city and they stoned him to death. Bible readers, the Bible says uh, the crowd cast him out of the city to stone. Matter of fact, uh, there was even some that stood on the outskirts of the city consenting to his death. I guess that made the mob legal. Uh, but here was Stephen who would give his life for the gospel at the first appearance. Y'all, it would seem like nobody uh, was there to stand up for Brother Stephen. I wondered when I read the text, Reverend Evans, where were the other six deacons? Uh, the Bible does not say where they were. But I wondered, Sister Nichols, where were the other deacons? But there's one thing I did discover that Stephen, uh, right before he died, he looked up into heaven. The Bible says uh, he didn't see a vision like Zechariah, but Stephen caught a glimpse of glory. I kind of feel all right, y'all. Uh, we don't know much about heaven, but there... Uh, was a, dis a theologian that described it this way. He said, it's an unknown region uh, with a well-known inhabitant. I'm talking about heaven, y'all. Stephen looked up and the Bible says he saw an unusual sight. What do you mean? Well, Colossians 3 and 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Y'all ain't in here. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Matthew 26 says, Jesus said, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, but hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of God. Well, y'all, we are acquired, uh, uh, we acquire faith so we can one day sit on the right hand of our Father. Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Where did you see him, Isaiah? I saw him high on a throne. I saw him lifted up, y'all. The Bible says his train filled the temple. I got to get out of here, y'all, but standing on the right hand of God. Is there anybody here that glad that Jesus is on the right hand? of the Father. And because he's on the right hand, Reverend Manning, I can say he's standing for me. He stood up for you. And I hear Stephen saying, y'all might have turned your backs on me, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. He stood up for me. Saul is consenting my death. But he stood up for me. Is there anybody here? You was down and out. And when you looked around, you saw Jesus standing up for you. I looked around. I looked around. Couldn't find my mother. Couldn't find my father. Couldn't find the members of the church. But I saw Jesus standing up for me. My siblings was not there. I couldn't find nobody to stand up for me. My friends walked away and left me. But on my right side, I had Jesus. Is there anybody here? 
that can say I'm glad I'm so glad he stood up for me did he stand up for you when your back was against the wall did he stand up for you and because he stood I can say what 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 a friend we have in Jesus what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege it is to carry everything 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 to God in prayer y'all ain't in here but let me testify I'm glad he stood up for me I'm glad when y'all act funny and turn your back on me he stands up for me when people have nothing good to say he stands up for me and the Bible says the Bible says some glad morning some glad morning when this life when this life is over ah ah I'll fly away I'll fly away one day when this roll this old shell this old shell is rolled down the aisle placed before the church it may be the last time perhaps nobody will stand and say a word but let me testify you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me what did he do he stood he stood up when nobody else stood he stood up and so let me bid you farewell whatever be tied here God will God will I said God will won't he take care of you is there anybody here is there anybody here is there any witnesses in here that can say he will he will yes he will yes he will won't he will he will he won't he I can't hear nobody won't he will he will he won't he won't he will he won't he won't he won't he won't he will he won't he y'all ain't saying nothing I can't hear nobody won't he will he yes he will yes he will yes he will he'll stand up yeah. he'll stand up yeah. he'll stand up yeah. when others sit down yeah. he'll stand up is there yeah. anybody here is there anybody oh. here that know he'll stand up he'll stand up for you when others sit down on you uh, but let me encourage you you need to stand up for him stand up for Jesus grandma said if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything so you stand be a Christian soldier he stood up for us and because he stood for us I'll stand for him as we stand all over the building I will trust in oh yes I will
How many going to trust him today? How many going to trust him today? How many know that Jesus sits on the right hand? He's our intercessor. He's our savior. When Satan said I'm guilty, when I was guilty, Jesus sat on the right hand and said, that's all right, I paid the price. He ain't guilty no more. That's right, all have sinned and come short. Nobody in here is not guilty. We're all guilty. But we have an intercessor. But the only way you can be saved is that you accept him as your Lord and Savior. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I guarantee you today you won't see that glorious heaven. But if you accept him, you will become an heir to the throne. You will become a prince to the king. You will become a child of God. The doors of the church is open. You know who you are. You know if you accepted him or not. You know who you are. Tomorrow is not planned. Tomorrow is not Tomorrow is not a promise. But you got hope today. My brother is coming. My brother is coming. Get your business fixed while the blood is still running in your veins. Tomorrow is not promise. Is there another one? If you don't have a church home, no better place than Bethel. No better pastor than Anthony L. Gilmore. No better church family than the Bethel Church family. Somebody, somebody else that hasn't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No better place than the house of the Lord. Where the prayers of the righteous is going up. God is in this holy temple. He's present right now. Matter of fact, he's everywhere at the same time. He knows what you did last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows. He saw it. And he still loves you so much that he would accept you into his kingdom. You have a chance. Is there another one? Is there another one? Don't let this chance pass you by. You might not get another chance. How good the Lord is. Amen and thank God. How good the Lord really is. How good the Lord is. We know, Sister Kathy, that our brother is already a faithful member here at Bethel, amen? And I know his work schedule prevents him from being here. And he is coming as a candidate for baptism. Amen. God bless you, my brother. We're going to take him in as a candidate, amen. He is no stranger here at Bethel. He is a faithful member. His work schedule prevents him from being here, but we will receive him as a candidate for baptism. Amen? How good the Lord really is. We are ready for the benediction. Before we have the benediction, we have a christening, a baby. We're going to christen the family of Sister Paris Sweeney. And their family, Sister Regina, you all come as we prepare for the christening. After the christening, I'm going to ask Sister Cheryl Smith to come, and then Sister Yolanda, 
and then Sister Yannicka. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious. <laughs> Brother Calvin thinks I'll just be making stuff up. He said, where does he get this stuff from? <laughs> God bless you. Y'all come close. Come close. Come on, church family. Give it up for this family today. Little Sayori is here today, and we're going to dedicate her back to the Lord. Amen? Now, we know that we don't, we don't baptize children here because we want to make sure they know what they're doing. So we wait. We teach them and train them up in the ways of the Lord, and then when the time is right, they accept the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. Amen? Amen. But little Sayori Elani Sweeney Austin is here today. And Bethel, you all remember the story. She was born preemie. And I remember when, when Paris called me crying. And Paris said, she ain't going to make it. The doctor said, the doctor said, the brain. I said, the doctor, I don't know what he's talking about. We know another God. We know another doctor. And I said to Paris, the doctor is practicing medicine. <laughs> We're going to trust God. And how many months? That was almost a year ago, Paris. Tomorrow, one year ago. And look at her today. God is good, y'all. When, uh, when this baby, when little Sayari was born, it was even on the news. It was on Channel 2, I think. They did a special story about how... She wasn't expected to make it, but look at her today. And so, God is good. Amen. So let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with joy in our hearts, thanksgiving in our hearts. We praise you today, God, for the gift of little Sayori, the love, the grace that surrounds this family as we gather today to dedicate her into your loving care. We ask your blessings on little Sayori. I pray your blessings on this family, these godparents, grandparents. Pray your blessings on this church and all who will witness this beautiful moment. I pray that you would guide us to commit this child back to you. And may your presence be felt among us today as we dedicate little Sayori back to you these blessings we ask in thy son Jesus name amen today church family we gather to celebrate the gift of life and to present little Sayori to the Lord in a sacred act of dedication this christening today church family is a beautiful symbol beautiful symbol of the grace of God marking the beginning of this child's journey in faith and so as parents, godparents, as a church community, we commit to walking alongside little Sayori, teaching her the ways of Jesus Christ. We encourage her to grow in faith and in her little service to God Almighty. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 19, let the little children come to me. Don't hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Paris Sweeney, God has entrusted you with this precious gift. You named her Sayori Ilani Sweeney Austin. Did I say it right? Do you acknowledge today your dependence on God's grace as you raise little Sayori in the Christian faith? Do you promise to teach her about the love the truth of Jesus Christ? Do you promise to pray for her and to nurture her in the fellowship of these fellow believers? If so, let it be known by responding, I do. These godparents, Sister Dejane Page, Dejane Page, thank you, Sister Chanel Roberson, Sister Judy Canton, Brother Charles Eurasia, who could not be here, and Brother George Canton. You have been chosen today to serve as godparents for little Sayori. 
Do you pledge to support and encourage Sayori as she grows, to guide her in faith and to pray for her in her spiritual journey? If so, let it be known by responding, we do. We do. Chanel said it louder because you're going to have to <laughs> kidnap people's kids. <laughs> Church family, if you would stand at this time. If I could have a baby, I wouldn't let her get nowhere near Chanel. <laughs> to our congregation, to the Bethel Community Church, this community of faith, do you promise to support and pray for this family? Do you promise to be the village? Because it does take a village. Do you promise to help raise Sayori in the knowledge of God's love and of God's grace? If so, let it be known by answering, we do. God bless you. you. may be seated. Today we dedicate little Sayori back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To her grandmother, Regina, we know grandmas are special in the sight of grandchildren. Grandparents do what they want to do. Where are the grandparents at? You only wanted to eat broccoli and carrots, and Grandma says, here's some fruit snacks. And so, Regina, you be that grandparent. And when Paris steps out of line, you remind Paris, I raised you. So you the boss. But we dedicate little Sayori back to the Lord today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that your Spirit dwell in her heart. And little Sayori, may you grow in wisdom and grace all the days of your life. She's not responding because she and I have a special language that we speak. And she don't understand this kind of talk. So I'll talk to her after church. Let's pray, church family. Eternal God, our Father, gracious and loving God, we thank you today for the gift of new life. We thank you for what you've done in this child's life. We thank you for her testimony. We thank you that she is a light in a dark world. We thank you for shining your light to show your goodness, your healing power on this child. We thank you for the gift of new life, the opportunity to witness this sacred moment today. I pray today, God, that you would look on little Sayori, that she will grow in faith, hope, and love, always walking in your ways. I pray, God, that you would bless this family today, bless this grandmother, these godparents, these guardians. I pray that you would bless this church family as we surround them with love and guidance. These blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Church say, amen. God bless you. You may go in peace. Little Sayori, give it up for little Sayori and her family today. <laughs> look at Chanel, look at her, look, see? Snatching her up, Lord Jesus. God bless you. <laughs> we are ready for the benediction. Those that are coming, Sister Cheryl is going to come, and then Sister Yolanda will come, and then Sister Yannika, and we'll be ready for the benediction. BCC, 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 we say we love our pastor, we say we love his wife, we say he, we love his children and his grandchildren, is that correct? I can't hear you, well we are celebrating 15 years, there are little chess boxes in the back, all donations for them, they have Terry with us, they have listened to us. They have cried with us. They have prayed for us. They have prayed for our families. They've prayed for our children, our grandchildren. Am I correct? Well, let's show them some love for 15 years of service for BCC. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. <laughs>
Good afternoon, church family. Can y'all hear? Y'all can hear me. It's that time again for our children trunk or treat, and I'm here asking for donations. And we also need at least 20 or more cars to participate this year. Everyone, if you please can come on out. You can go to the dollar store, hook up a few items to decorate your cars. But we want it to be fun, but most, most likely safe for our kids. So we appreciate it. It will be Thursday, October 31st from 5 to 8. We're going to have fun, food, activities. We just want to have a good time. So please, please, for your participation, there will be a sign-up sheet in the back for you to sign up for your cars or whatever. 20 or more, please. Thank you, church family. Amen. Now, Yolanda, are you all looking for, for candy donations as well, right, Yolanda? You're looking for donations, so pick up a few extra bags of candy at the stores and bring them starting next Sunday. God bless you. To all of our worshipers, we want to thank you for being with us virtually and in person. Today, Pastor Gilmore spoke from Zechariah 3, verses 1 through 4, and Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Our prayer is that you've been blessed by our service today. Please join us for Bible study on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. Also, on the first and third Wednesday of the month, from 9 to 10.30, BCC hosts a food giveaway. Faith Over Fear meets on the first and third Thursdays of the month. Sunday school is available for children, youth, and separate classes for men and women. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. There is a call-in for those who cannot attend in person. The LLAR Pancake Breakfast will be held on Saturday, November 2nd at Applebee's in Fairfield from 8 to 10 a.m. The tickets are $15. We are also looking for volunteers to help as servers. Please see Sister Kathy Hall or Reverend Evans for more information. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we want to remind all members to wear their pink ribbon pin for the month of October. We wear our pins in memory of our loved ones who lost the fight to breast cancer and to honor those that survived. We want to remind them they are not alone. For those who do not have a pin, please see one of the Cancer Awareness members after church and they will make sure you receive a pin. This year we will display a memory board of those loved ones that fought the good fight to the end. The memory board will be on display during each cancer awareness breakfast as well in the back of the church throughout the year. Please submit names of your loved ones male or female along with their year of passing by Sunday, October 20th. The sign-up sheet will be located in the back of the church. October 26th from 10 to 12 noon will be the Breast Cancer Awareness Breakfast. Please come out and support the life of our sisters and brothers. Also, October 27th, we want everyone to wear something pink on Sunday. That again is October 27th. The Faith Over Fear ministry is having their Hallelujah Night on Thursday, October 31st. They are asking for donations of candy for their trunk or treat. There are barrels in the lobby to accept your candy donations. Stay close to us as we stay close to you. Please visit our Facebook page for further worship opportunities. For your friends and family who do not have Facebook, please tell them this service will be posted to our YouTube official channel. 
Simply search for Bethel Community Church or Fairfield and subscribe to our channel. Blessings from the church house to your house. On behalf of our entire church, we welcome you to always worship at the Five Star Church, Bethel Community Church of Fairfield. Stay prayerful, stay in the word, and stay safe. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Yannicka. We're standing all over the building. Good to see Sister Wyatt here today. God bless you. To all of our visitors, I feel that I voice the sentiment of our church family at large. When I say to you, don't make this the last time. Come back and worship with us again. Don't forget, today is voter registration day. Stop by the table in the lobby if you're not registered to vote. Sister Jeter and the other volunteers there will help you to make sure you are eligible to vote. On election day, if you don't know where to go vote, you can come here, right, Sister Irving? They can come here to the chandelier room at 7 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. You have no excuse. If you don't know where you vote, just come here. You can vote right here. Nothing else to claim our attention. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us, henceforth now and forevermore. Shall we all say amen? Hug somebody you're going to talk.